Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Four Paths to Your Most Creative Work, no matter where you're working from. If you're like me, you're working from your basement or some other location. So I think you're going to find this webinar very fun and exciting today. Um, I'm Richard Whitehead. I'm the Director of Product Marketing here at Workfront, and I'll be your host today. We've got some great content prepared, but first I want to walk through and review just a few housekeeping items. First, the audio is broadcast via your computer speakers. So if you're having trouble seeing the slides uh, or hearing the audio, please ensure flash is enabled in your browser and then go ahead and refresh your screen. Second, the session is being recorded and it'll be emailed to you within 24 hours. Third, the resources are under the resource list on the right side of your screen. So the slides and any other things that we cover today will be there. And then fourth, we encourage you to ask questions throughout the webinar. And we have some time planned at the end to answer some of those questions. But if we're not able to get to those questions, uh, we'll send those back to you, the answers via email. To submit your questions, simply type it in the chat box on the left-hand side of your presentation console. Today, I'm really excited to be joined by one of our partners of the year, Sela Consulting, and Sophie Regulus, who is joining me, who's the managing director in, of, of consulting there at Sela. So Sophie, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and Sela? Yes, thank you so much. So um, I'm actually coming to you all today from our spare room um, with the door locked so my children cannot enter. That should be great. And um, I am very happy to announce that I'm working with Sela um, my background really comes from uh, agency operations. That would be external agency operations. Uh, I really help organize companies with their workflows, their operations, operational turnarounds. We also help with technology infrastructure and technology backbones for organizations. So we at Seller, we really do bring together um, what we call a trifecta of um, solutions for our for our clients so we're an award-winning company uh, in, that work in staffing and consulting and managed solutions for creative marketing and digital teams through staffing we help people build meaningful careers and for consulting we partner with companies to solve challenges across a wide range of industries with some of our deep industry experts and uh, with their experiences we call this a tri the seller trifecta and it really means that we have the right people and we understand our clients to deliver the results. And we generally find that the best results come from having a partner that can do all three. Thank you for having me on the panel today. Yeah, no, thanks, Sophie. We're excited again to get into the content for the, this webinar and to kind of get things kicked off, you know, we're going to share firsthand best practices for connecting, collaborating, and managing the right work at the right time, regardless of your location, even if you're like Sophie and you've got the door locked and got the dogs hit up somewhere to make sure that they don't bark. So in this webinar, we're going to discuss kind of some four key things here. Uh, we're going to talk about the business and the impacts, of course, that we've seen recently and how to iterate and plan for the work. You know, when obviously we're getting close to starting annual planning or things have changed uh, to the plan that we have today. The second part is we're going to talk about the team or how to get everyone aligned to the right uh, work at the right time. Um, if you're like most companies, um, you've got your collaboration stack put together quickly, but how do you ensure that you're working on the right things to drive business outcomes? The third thing we're going to talk about is the time and the best ways to streamline your workflow so that you have more time to be creative and to create uh, versus simply doing busy work. And then the final one is the work itself, which is how to best manage requests and resources to get more done to produce those outcomes that I mentioned. So today we're also joined by some great panelists that have some amazing insight into what's happening across various industries. So I'm jo joined by Charlie Borey, who's the AVP of Creative Operations at AT&T, Kevin Brucato, who's the VP of Creative Operations at Prudential Financial, and Kika De Davis, who's the head of production at Twitter Studio. So let's take a minute and, and introduce yourselves, if you will. So we'll start there with Charlie. 
Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm uh, situated in uh, Lido Beach, New York right now. So uh, as uh, you guys, we have a large in-house agency for AT&T in New York City. So my responsibility is to handle all of the operations and make sure that it is running smooth. Um, so we have a, a rather large team, both in New York and in Los Angeles, and um, I'm looking forward to a great presentation. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. Uh, this is Kevin Brucato, just a, a stone's throw away from uh, Lido, Long Island, is uh, Morristown, New Jersey, across the river in, in, in um, New Jersey. So I, I'm the VP of Creative Operations at Prudential Financial. While most of my career has been in brand marketing and advertising, today I actually sit at the epicenter of it all in global communications, where my primary focus is on helping folks do their best work by enabling them with the right technology and the processes that go along with it. So over to you, Kika. Hi, I'm Kika. Um, I'm the head of production at Twitter Studio, which is the internal creative agency at Twitter within the marketing org. Um, I actually am a fully remote worker and have been for the past four and a half years. I live in Houston, Texas, um, having moved here from San Francisco and Los Angeles. Um, and I'm head of production is kind of a catch-all title. I'm, I'm really responsible for the overall um, operations um, and process development for the department. Excellent. Well, again, we're excited to hear from all three of you today. And as we kind of kick off the first discussion point, let's talk about the impact that we're seeing from on the business side. So, Sophie? Yeah, thank you. So, you know, obviously across the last couple of months, in-house agencies have started to really prove to be incredibly valuable for their organizations. We at Seller actually decided to do a, um, a survey, a special survey um, where we interviewed about 250 creative marketing and digital professionals. They answered a bunch of questions about the impact of COVID-19. And what their responses have really shown us is that most in-house teams have made significant contributions to their companies in this March, April timeframe. And they've been able to successfully adapt um, to a fully remote operations and be, be still very nimble in their response to clients' needs. These findings we found were echoed when the Association of National Advertisers or the ANA's research named that in-house teams would be the most important producers of new creative assets during the early spread of this pandemic. So what you're gonna see um, throughout this presentation today are a number of slides that pull from our um, special seller survey related to COVID-19. This information, as I say, comes from about 250 creators and your experiences may align or they may not. Um, everyone is going through different things. So um, all views are valid. And uh, you know, I would, I would encourage thinking about these as what we've seen and how you, your company or your um, responses, your, how you feel your response would play into that. So we're gonna jump right in to really looking at how some of this data played out. Um, we asked, you know, did your company have a contingency plan in place? And we found that around 59% of companies did have a contingency plan in place. This has been quite interesting um, because many companies were really starting to get to that virtual working scenario. So um, those companies had people set up with laptops already and were a little bit more open to free plan working. Um, people have a, um, spaces where they can work from a location other than their desk, or some folks don't even have assigned desks. Then there are other companies who still very much work in cubes, set cubes, set offices, and require people to come in every day. Um, either way, people still found that they were able to get work done. Um, and even those who didn't have a plan actually felt that they were a little better prepared than they even thought that they would be. Um, I feel like the, in, the information that's here is uh, quite interesting, that we have a very high in the very prepared to somewhat prepared um, in having a plan in place. So people felt that they could actually do some work. Um, and then being able to work off site Again, just by having a laptop and access internet access at home, most people were in the very prepared 
um, with just a few in the somewhat um, prepared. Uh, and I think it's I think it's very validating to know that with all of the web-based technologies and the communica cha communication channels that are open to us, we're really truly able to continue work when we have to. We we survive in the space of adversity. Yeah, it really, it really was um, exciting to see how quickly people were able to get up and and working. So let's kind of take the first panel question here and. Um, starting with Charlie, I'll ask the question, how did you plan for work and then iterate when things were suddenly changing, whether that's your annual plan or other plans that you had in place? Uh, sure. So, it, you know, being part of a large company, we have to have a business continuity plan in place. So we took a lot of lessons learned after um, Hurricane Sandy hit where we didn't have a lot of remote tools or equipment to give to our team. So with that said, over the last two years, we were able to really focus on that and improve the ability for our teams to work remotely. Now, the big challenge for us was, although that people had laptops and, and those capabilities, we were not able to uh, as a general rule, to work remotely uh, with the team. So on occasion, we let people do that. But um, as an overall thing, you know, when everything hit, it was essentially on a Friday, everybody was in the office, and on a Monday, everybody was working remotely. So the first week, um, we had some, a couple of stumbling blocks to just really – make sure that the team was um, be able to work and, and solve whatever technical problems. But in the, in the time leading up to that, we were really able to uh, do a lot of training, do a lot of um, getting people familiar with the different technologies. So that was a big savings for us uh, in order for the team to continue to work uh, and do projects. Awesome. And, and Kevin, from your perspective there, Prudential, what, what did you do? Yeah, similar to, uh, to Charlie, I mean, part of our BAU process, uh, we're required to put a lot of rigor around contingency planning, which does happen to include pandemic planning. Uh, today, we actually have 98% of our workforce uh, enabled effectively working from home. But, but to me, I think the real story here is something that um, my team had started a few years ago. It's what we refer to is an initiative called How We Work. And it's really focus is, is less about deploying the technology software, in this case, you know, the remote work software or laptops, but really about mastering new ways of working that leverages that technology that's in place. So for the last year or so, uh, we were able to move the, the needle pre-pandemic uh, by drilling into folks, uh, you know, what a collaboration tool like an MS Teams or, or a Slack uh, how to use it, why we use it. We've had executive support from the top down driving it organically. We had project teams and, and employees from the ground up learning how to use it. And we had my team helping people understand um, some of the outcomes that you'll get from it. So to that extent, I feel like, you know, we definitely were a little bit ahead of the curve you know, in my department uh, in, in terms of readiness for this. Uh, it didn't really catch us uh, off guard as, as many other departments across companies and experience. So to that extent, I think uh, COVID-19 not only helped accelerate, you know, this initiative I have of how we work, but I think it's also validated the importance of it to people who were, who were questioning it. Yeah, no, that's, that's perfect. And Kika, I know you've been working from home for a, a little bit of time, but how did Twitter handle this scenario? Yeah, so um, jumping off of what Kevin just said in regards to accelerating things, um, Twitter had already had at a company OKR level um, to decentralize um, our working environment. So uh, two years ago, we dropped um, the HQ from the San Francisco office. Um, so instead of saying, you know, we're going to the HQ, it's just San Francisco. Um, and so year by year, what they wanted to do was increase the amount of remote workers. Um, I was the original 1% of um, Twitter employees who was working remotely. Um, and this just pushed everything into high gear. 
Um, I'm sure most of you have seen by now that our CEO, Jack, has communicated to the entire company that everyone um, will be allowed to work, uh, work remotely moving forward, if it makes sense. Um, I think 75% of our company is working fully remotely right now, um, and that's due mostly to the data centers um, needing on-site staff. Um, so, you know, but before all of this was happening, our team, specifically the internal creative agency, we were already a dispersed team. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm in Texas. Uh, a large uh, contingency of our team was in San Francisco, um, mm -hmm. Los Angeles, and New York. We also had team members who were fully remote in Oregon and Colorado. So we were already working in a, in a remote or dispersed environment. Um, and so the challenge that we're currently dealing with right now is having a change of mindset with teams who were used to working on site in an office together collaboratively um, and finding ways to make them feel empowered to still have that same um, feeling of working together um, while you know obviously working in, in your own home. Um, so we were definitely set up for the technology, had the right tools in place to, to do work um, uh, remotely, but now we're, we're getting into the more culture aspect of things. Yeah, and I think all of those are great perspectives because, you know, like in your case, Kika, where people have been working remotely for a little while, but others, it's like a new thing. Um, and what I love is that a lot of organizations realize that we can work remotely, we can be productive, um, but it's up to us to make sure that we get the right communication style and things put together. So thanks so much from the panel. So. As we think about the next topic, of course, it's how does that then impact the team? So, Sophie, you want to take us through that? Yeah, sure. Thank you. So what we've really been seeing is that um, at, at least, you know, 82 percent of our respondents have actually implemented some cost saving measurements. And we see that there are a number of different ways um, that people have been trying to save some budgets. There is hiring freezes. We're seeing that quite a lot across the board. Obviously, budget cuts, freezing certain types of work. Um, I think it's interesting the amount of um, contingent labor people are reducing but not eliminating totally, and they're kind of very even. And I think that, that that's kind of critical. We're noticing that not everyone is laying off. Many people are furloughing. Um, but they're also still understanding that as work comes through, we are looking at how to um, maximize our in-house force, but still use that contingent labor for, um, for specialty needs and for additional, um, additional work. And what we're finding is that the roles that are remaining, the people that are staying in-house and as they're doing their work, they're actually being required to stretch their roles and um, reestablishing what they're doing in their role and uh, reestablishing the operations of how to get work done without loss of quality, even with the staff reduction or a shift in how things are being, um, uh, what needs to be produced and by whom. We're also seeing that, you know, as folks are working from home, there's a number of technology gaps that are kind of being seen now. Everything from connectivity um, that happens in, in individuals' homes, but also um, the need for things like a dam and accessing a dam. Uh, I know that Charlie's coming through on a VPN right now through his machine, which puts another layer of complications um, of, of getting through to, the, to web services. We are seeing that um, a lot of teams are looking for a more robust project management tool um, or don't even have one that's online or web-based. So I really do think that this has been one of those opportunities for us to, to see where we can um, tweak our technology and even our process of how we get work done and how we move through business on a day-to-day. -day. I do believe that this is going to make a difference to um, how people reprioritize or how businesses reprioritize technology requirements and um, and serve web-based services just to get work done and ensure that we get the right people aligned around the right work. And, you know, obviously the roles that people play with the teams that we have in place and uh, the tools that we have to that are available to us are going to play a massive part in that. 
So I was thinking a little bit more about how do people get work done? Um, how are you getting teams aligned? Yeah, it's exactly right, Sophie. And like you were talking about in the first part, it's about, okay, something's happened. We've got to make a change. We've got to put our business continuity plans in place to make sure people can do their work. And now with the team, it's like, am I working on the right things? So let's let's go to the panelists and ask the question, you know, how are you able to get people aligned on the right work at the right time? So Kevin, we'll start with you. Sure, yeah, I mean, just as important as the tools are, I think some of the intangible stuff are really critical, uh, especially under the current climate. So, you know, the approach, you know, I'd like to talk a little bit about is really about some of the levers you know, communication, transparency, and empathy, I think, are real cri critical levers to keeping the teams and the work aligned, um, not just, you know, specifically how we communicate externally, but how we're, how we're communicating, you know, within, within our internal department and teams as well. You know, some, some of the, 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 the things we thought of that we put in place were, you know, in keeping people informed of, of new processes and new ways of working, we, we held weekly critical meetings that were chaired actually by the head of our head of our group um, where we didn't just talk about again like the technology of stuff but we actually talked more about um, the importance of maintaining you know a, a physical wellness as a priority or mental or or um, you know as well as some of the some of the actual processes that we were rolling out you know a lot of effort was put into building the remote culture um, technology and on the employee side as well, where we wanted to keep employees engaged and motivated. I mean, these, these are definitely strange times we're under. Um, and a lot of the work we did pre-pandemic uh, were around being a learning organization and, and bringing in the best practices. So uh, we, we found a way to keep that alive by actually bringing in uh, external speakers and thought leaders uh, and conducting them similar like we're doing today through these virtual sessions. And then also um, another example is, is of, of keeping the people and teams aligned would be uh, we actually had a, an internal volunteer group um, of employees that came together and banded, and they published a, a weekly curriculum. They do it weekly, and it targets free activities that they've organized that employees can participate in. It's focused on things that are whether social, that gets people you know connected and talking and motivated, or, or physical. An example could be like a chair yoga type thing, or, or mentally stimulating things, as, as well as bringing in some some uh, featured people to talk maybe about financial wellness. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you. Kika, what about there at Twitter? Yeah, I mean, the people team at Twitter have done a phenomenal job. Um, we're all feeling the hashtag love where you work um, emotions these days. Um, the, the teams have really done um, a lot of work to make sure that our mental, emotional, um, physical um, health um, are a priority for the company. Um, our department has taken a stance that 80 is the new 100. Um, so despite, you know, some roles getting lost um, and and taking on additional work, um, we are really trying to lead with empathy and, uh, um, and just know that people are dealing with different things at home um, and that we need to understand that, you know, before when we would do 100 or 120 percent, um, you know, it's really come down. Um, in regards to the prioritization and alignment of work, um, we really leaned into our marketing ops team um, that straddle across um, the entire marketing org to help us um, align and prioritize with um, the marketing leads um, across marketing. Um, you know, we're the in-house agency, so we're a little bit at the mercy of, um, of the entire marketing org as they try to figure out their individual prioritization and then communicate that down to us. Um, and we've decided, you know, that we're, we're really taking more of a Switzerland stance um, to where previously before coronavirus, um, you know, we, we would be at the forefront helping teams with prioritization. Um, but since things are moving so quickly um, and prioritizations are changing so fast, um, it, it really took um, a large amount of time um, on our end where we weren't able to focus on getting the work done, um, but rather the alignment prioritization happening in marketing. So we really have leaned in um, more heavily into our marketing ops team to help us support with that. Yeah, I love that. Charlie, what about you? So uh, the company does an amazing job with making sure that the health and wellness support is available to all the employees. So 
Um, there's constant communication from the corporate level to all the employees as far as if they're struggling or need resources and things like that. So, so there's all of that is available to the employees at, at pretty much any time. So, and they've changed obviously as this, you know, the circumstances or the uh, have changed throughout the last few months uh, to make whatever resources available. Um, what we've done internally since it was a big change for us from going all working in the office to working remotely, you know, what we've seen and in the operations role, you know, we give people tools to the best of our abilities to be able to work. But what I've done is allow them, you know, because creative work is such a, you know, expansive process where it changes and it's a very collaborative process. Um, we let the teams use the tools to however they feel that their, their individual teams are going to be most helpful to them. And what we've found is that they've thought of uh, interesting ways of using the technology that we didn't think of before. So rather than, uh, you know, say you can't do that, we, we force that, um, I, those ideas, uh, we pass it along to the individual teams and we allow them to find their own way and be there to support and assist them. Because as you know, the, the creative process is very collaborative and the, the team is really, you know, that's the biggest challenge for us is in the office, they're usually grouping together or, have different kinds of meetings and things like that. So how do we replicate that over, um, you know, remotely? And what we've done is give them the tools to, you know, have online meetings, have reviews, uh, you know, and give them as many resources to keep those touch points. Um, we also keep a lot of the things that the softer things that we've done in the office as far as having, you know, staff meetings or bringing in people or having lunches on Friday where everyone will get a lunch and we'll have it a, a WebEx call or something at, at a certain time. And, and you see people's hobbies and things like that uh, or their homes, you know. So we've tried to stay more in touch. And like uh, Kevin said, that, you know, there's a tremendous amount of empathy that we try and reach out and the managers try and reach out to make to make people more at ease. And that's been uh, one of the really big changes that we've seen. Yeah, and that's what I was thinking too, as everybody talked is that empathy side really plays out and seeing people become natural leaders and taking on these interesting things of like chair yoga and other, other things were pretty cool. So, Let's turn our attention now to the time because um, we're not getting more of that. But Sophie, what about the time? So um, time is a very interesting concept here. Um, you know, for right now, we're really thinking about um, getting work organized and prioritized. So what we've started seeing is a, um, a significant kind of uptick in the amount of prioritized work and work has been increased, even though people aren't, uh, there aren't as many people in the office, or there's no one in the office, but aren't as many people in the, com in the, in the company, we are getting a look through a lot more work in the in-house agencies. Um, we're also seeing an increase in the speed of the work turnaround. Now, you know, obviously this is not surprising to anybody, but the majority of that work is related to COVID communications. But what's been interesting in conversations that we've had with uh, many companies is that this has really impacted the internal communications team. The internal communications team is now being given a spotlight as it's never had before. And uh, organizations are starting to see for the first time how powerful a team that really is. And that's starting to come through in, in both internal and external communications. Um, there obviously is a reprioritizing and a different strategy to messaging. And there's many different um, commercials we've been seeing recently that are having a voiceover spin on established uh, commercials to make them related to COVID-19. 
Um, and we are seeing that many businesses are prioritizing digital, um, you know, in a cost cutting uh, uh, time, really focusing away from the printed materials, people not wanting to receive mail and um, getting things that have been touched through your door and moving to a digital environment is something again, that we're really seeing an increase in. And even with all of this massive change, people are still trying to do work um, remotely as work as normal, which is quite surprising considering many people are facing such significant challenges at home, just home distractions from children or cats or, or an, any animal. Um, we're seeing that there is um, technology challenges as, we, as we've discussed, but also just the general sense that we're all going through this together. Everyone you're talking to is feeling some level of stress about what's happening with COVID, not necessarily related to their work, but just as human beings working with each other. Um, and I think, you know, just to nod back to the comment that Charlie just made, people are pulling together and that's very wonderful to see. And we're seeing how um, our tools are helping make that happen. Video conferencing tools have gone through the roof. I think there's nobody happier right now than Zoom, even with their challenges. Um, Communication platforms in general are really um, being utilized much more heavily than they were previously. And then of course, all important project management and workflow tools and really seeing how work flows through and understanding now for the first time, I think true visibility and the connection that these tools can bring. One of the items that I feel is often overlooked is understanding the governance of how communication should be established. And I do believe that through trial and error or someone being proactive during this time, those channels are being more solidified and having some kind of governance on how we're talking to each other to get work done in a timely fashion um, is, is definitely um, on the increase. So this really makes us start thinking about how we're streamlining our work um, so that we do get more time to do the, the prioritized work. And, and how that kind of affects us as, as businesses. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right, Sophie. And sometimes I feel like my days are like a Slack attack. And, uh, you know, so it's important, I think, to look at all the tools that you have in your toolbox and look at ways to streamline that workflow so you can be more creative and have that time to be creative. So Kika, let's start with you. And how would you answer this question? Well, we have a million and one tools that we use in regards to communication. Um, we, of course, there's email, we use Slack as well. So I'm gonna take that Slack attack term from you. Um, we have Jira, um, we have um, DMs, so on Twitter, um, oh, that's how a lot of the company communicates as well. Um, and we are implementing Workfront. Um, so it's a, yet another tool for communication. Um, what we've done uh, recently was to consolidate all of those tools um, in, a, in our manual um, to identify, uh, and we do have a, a manual for our department. Um, so it, there's a page on it that identifies all the communication tools. Um, what their purposes are, um, so how we've set their purpose, um, and then also tips and tricks. Um, I'm two hours ahead from my um, partners in San Francisco, an hour behind from y'all in New York. Um, so I've, I've always been very mindful of um, hours of operation um, and really not trying to ping people too early in the morning or too late in the evening when people are getting ready to sit down and have um, you know dinner with their families. Um, but I also, you know, I do start early. Um, so, and I don't want to impede my productivity for the hours that I've set for my day. Um, so on a personal, um, in, in a personal um, example, when I email or message team members who are behind me, I usually just add to the beginning of the message, do not respond until you are up and running and settled into your workday. However, I am just letting you know X, Y, or Z, or please reach out to me when you're up and running um, so we can so we can be productive today. Um, but really setting the um, the guidelines for how those tools should be used um, as a standard for the department and really encouraging people um, to communicate um, you know when they're available for work, when they're unavailable for work, um, declining meetings, 
um, if they need to, um, putting up uh, an away on Slack, changing your status to your available hours is something that a lot of our team members do, um, and really keeping the calendar up to date um, so they can communicate out when their availability is. You know, those are great tips. Thank you. Charlie. So we, uh, we also use Workfront. Um, so one of the things that we've had is we do, we have a lot of projects, both print and digital. So we do digital routing. So when everything went remote, it was really not as challenging as, as you would think since, since we already are doing the routing of projects through a digital workflow anyway. So most of the team uh, was able to just actually use the tool uh, a lot more as opposed to what they were doing in the office. So we really leaned hard on our project management system to help manage uh, what it normally does, schedules, timelines, uh, creative workflows, things like that. So there was really no change that was needed there. Um, the process that changed uh, was typically how the creative folks uh, are doing their reviews. Um, what we use, uh, we use WebEx. So in-house, the company uses that as its standard communication tool. Um, so we're able to utilize WebEx, and they do a lot of creative reviews through WebEx and through some of the online tools. Um, and that just uh, kind of ropes right into use, into the project management system. Uh, that allows them to uh, follow the schedules, have off team meetings uh, for reviewing different you know rounds of changes between the creative directors and the art directors and so forth. Um, so there was not a tremendous change to that. It was really just getting switching from more being uh, in the in office where you would just meet with people to to really doing it online so so that worked very very well um, as far as getting assets go we have a, a digital asset management system that we use um, so the team is able to get the assets that it needs um, the bigger challenge as m m if you're in the creative field you know that the files tend to be enormous um, so the ability for people at home to access those files uh, based upon their own internet speeds was a little bit of a challenge. So we had to look and see how we could improve that as far as a process workflow to speed up the creative process. Um, so we made some adjustments with that. Um, and as Kika said, you know, we were conscious of time um, a lot of our clients are in LA, so we do get work later in the day. Um, but we manage that because our account team is cognizant and we manage those according to the schedules and things like that. So so it's kind of a real combination of, of many things that we were very familiar with. Uh, we just kind of tweaked it a little bit um, for a more digital type uh, workflow. And uh, we took a lot of the lessons learned that we have in the office and just really applied them uh, remotely. Well, that's great, thank you. Kevin. Yeah, I totally agree with uh, Kika and Charlie on, on all the stuff they talked about. Um, not to be redundant, um, I'll talk a little bit about time in itself as a thing. Um, you know, the concept structured nine to five days are more or less gone as far as I see it. Uh, we really need to adapt to the new normal where teams have unstructured days that now have these competing priorities, you know, whether it's health, COVID-19 related, family, things involving pets, uh, mental health and wellness. I myself personally find myself getting up earlier to get the work done. So that'll free me up time during the day to help homeschool my two boys. I then plug back in again, you know, late at night after everybody goes to sleep so I can catch up and stay current in my emails. Uh, the tools play such an important part of that to have the information readily available, whether it's uh, digital asset management or workflow tools. I do notice, though, that the days seem extremely long, yet the weeks are going by really fast. I mean, it's hard to believe we're completing month two of this. However, I do feel that one thing that's important is under the current climate, it's really important to stay productive. But for me and what I'm um, emphasizing with my team is that the priority really now should be on being effective over just trying to be efficient. Um, especially under today's circumstance where time is so limited. Uh, 
One other thing I've noticed that's contributing to this whole time dilemma is that, you know, in the office, there were these, these quick drive-by conversations. So you were updated, you had, um, everything now becomes a meeting invite and calendars are, are booking up. Uh, so, so sometimes I go from morning to end without a break in my, in my calendar. And I think, I think it's because people are defaulting to just a 30 minute time interval. So one of the things I've been encouraging and forcing uh, my team to do is to, you know, book a 10 or 15 minute meeting. If that's all the time you need to kind of free up some space or to leverage the tools to the best of their ability, whether it's an asset management tool or, or a collaboration tool or, or, or a workflow tool. Um, you know, collaboration workflow tools like Slack, we were talking about teams, Workfront really do help support this type of, of, of an unstru unstructured workday. I'll pause there. No, and, and, and I think all of you touched on this. It's, uh, it's important that we understand, you know, where our colleagues are, um, how calendars fill up. And I'll just throw in a little tip that I try to do is um, block out specific time on my calendar to get some of that work done. Or like you said, Kevin, I've got something I'm doing with my kids or uh, other type of things. Because I think what happens, especially now, is if you're like me, you go down in the basement, you're down in the basement all day long, and then you realize it's 7 p.m. and I haven't really talked to my family or any other human being. So um, that that's a huge part of that. So thank you very much from from the panelists. Let's go to our our next topic, which is really about the work and and getting the work done. Sophie, I think that's great. And uh, you know, I just I would just want to add one thing to that topic is that. To the point of being kind of sequestered into certain rooms, I have a client who has meetings from the back of her car. Um, I know that somebody has to work in their bathroom. Um, you know, I think that it's important that as we're connecting to folks, especially those who are home alone and are really, you know, sequestered um, to having a lot of alone time, spending just a few minutes at the head of each call, just checking in on the human level, and finding is actually helping increase productivity because people feel like they had that moment of personal touch and interaction and can get just more work done. Um, leading us into work, I, uh, you know, as we mentioned before, we had started seeing challenges bubble up um, from what people um, didn't have but do need to get work done. And it does come back to the same top two, three tools the DAM system, and a project management or workflow tool. Now, here we're really thinking about what do we need to do to get work done? How do we prioritize what needs to be done? Um, it's, it's not COVID all the time. There's still some general work that needs to be done. Um, and so getting that work through the system does still seem to be a challenge for people who aren't currently with you know, DAM systems or any kind of robust project management tool. And we're seeing that those those missing pieces of technology have a lot more um, impact to getting work done than even video conferencing tools, which is quite interesting because that makes me really feel like we can deal with having a phone conversation, um, but I need to get access to my assets. I need to be able to understand what's expected of me next. And as this work is getting reprioritized, um, it's not saying that work is stopping. On the contrary, work is very much picking up and moving forward. Um, however, the focus on the priorities of the work type has changed. We are much more in a digital first environment. We are looking very deeply at social media. Fortunately, we have Kika today with us who can help us see how that impacts. Um, there is a lot more happening in terms of PR and crisis communication, online events, just like this one. You know, we spend in our industry a lot of time in conferences, networking, learning from each other. I think it's a wonderful thing that that doesn't have to stop because we're all um, home-based right now. Uh, obviously, digital advertising and a real focus on content marketing. We've seen that pick up so drastically where rather than having distinct messages go out from brands based on channel, we're seeing that being pulled back up to having the content first and the channels lead from the content strategic objective. All that said, it really is having an impact on the kind of staffing that people are um, requiring. So the team members that either 
um, maybe were let go or have been reprioritized, we're now looking suddenly at a very distinct group of digital um, skilled resources and talent to come in and help in this COVID society that we are living in. So I was really wondering how, um, how we're all managing our work, how we're managing the requests, uh, and if we, got the, if we have the right resources to get that work done. Yeah, you're exactly right, Sophie. And, and you know, thinking about that from that content side, you know, just like you mentioned, we're as as budgets get frozen or cut, you know, we're having to work more maybe external or less externally and more kind of in-house. So Charlie, starting with you, how do you manage requests and resources to get more work or the same amount of work done? Um, sure. So what we've done um, is the first week we went out, we've been out for uh, almost 11 weeks now. So the first week we put a pause on any new projects coming in. So we have several hundred projects uh, on a typical week. So we put a pause. We made sure that we were able to finish the projects that were in-house and at the same time, just focus on making sure the teams could uh, work remotely. So about it took us a few days to iron out all those difficulties. Um, towards the end of the week, um, we said we were pretty much open for business again. Um, and the requests started coming in. Uh, what we've seen is, uh, you know, as, as Kevin and Kika has, have said, that um, the priorities of jobs now are focused around um, customer communications, um, well-beings of how not only the employees are doing, but how how our since we're in a retail business, it's extremely important that we get um, the message out that we're available here to help as need be. So we've seen a dramatic shift um, in that area. Uh, as an in-house agency, we've noticed that we were much more prepared than some of the larger agencies. So some of the work that they uh, would historically do, we were able to take on that work also. Um, so being able to really manage that type of work um, within our project management system, uh, coordinating with the different teams, you know, making sure that um, no one is home alone to follow up with them uh, as need be. You know, all of those played a central role into helping us to manage the requests come in. Um, we're very fortunate to have an, uh, an account team that does a great job in um, understanding the business really well and working with their internal clients. So. Um, they see across the board, so we, we have a number of different businesses that we work with, so they're able to help um, them understand which business is doing what and how their messaging may play into other areas. So, so throughout the whole cycle, I think, you know, we've been able to, um, with a little bit of a pause, just start to take on more work. and. There is a dynamic shift in the hours and things like that, but um, we do our very best to have a great um, home life balance. And um, I think we'll be taking a lot of the lessons learned over the last several weeks and, and when we go back and trying to incorporate them. That's great. Thanks, Charlie. Kevin? Yeah, you know, I feel like we've truly become now a digital workplace. And with that, we need to figure out fast how to manage the digital work. Um, one area to me that's always been a hot topic, debatable, is, you know, whether or not the need when there's a need for project management. Um, to me, the answer is clear. I, I've seen it and flagged it as a huge gap. Um, the PM function is, is definitely needed, uh, and tools like a Workfront that support it uh, need really do need to be part of this new digital ecosystem. You know, the ability to, to field requests, prioritize them, make sure they're routing to the correct team is, is going to be so critical. Um, thinking about resource planning, uh, optimization of those resources should now also be a consideration because you need to know who's working on what 
and you need to know where there is capacity or where there is overcapacity. You know, without them, I, you literally are, are flying blind. Um, and then shared shared collaboration tools, like uh, we talked a little bit about Teams and Slack, they enable you to have these remote conversations and, and continue to drive the collaboration around the content. But one of my biggest concerns right now is just with the amount of content flying around this digital workplace that's existing, uh, is it has to do with version control. Uh, it's gonna become so critical, especially with communications now, that if not addressed, it can get us all into big trouble. And then tools, tools like you know Google One, uh, Microsoft's OneDrive, SharePoint, or Google Docs can really help you uh, try to avoid these types of, of pitfalls by sharing on a, sharing, collaborating around a single document, and at the same time maintaining some semblance of, of version control. Yeah, for sure. I think that is a huge one um, that requires uh, everybody to be working on the same page. So, Kika, what about you? Our team is organized in, as an embedded model. Um, so we have teams um, from what we call lead program managers, essentially account directors with creative leads um, stacked against uh, the marketing verticals. Um, we've been um, set up this way for the past few years. We solidified the teams right before um, all of this hit. Um, so now what we're doing um, in a fully remote um, working environment is we've essentially created a black market of resources, uh, which is an unfortunate situation. Um, but essentially, um, as uh, priority work is coming through fast and furious, um, we, um, myself and my head of creative ops, are uh, working on the back end to get available resources um, from the embedded model to support these more priority projects um, that are coming in from the top. Um, our CMO is really trying to focus in on revenue-based work so we can keep our lights on, keep things moving, um, and also supporting the internal employee comms, I think, which we've um, touched on quite a bit on this call. Um, it's super important to let employees know what is going on and being as transparent as possible. So we're really digging in um, as being the creative support for that. Um, but unfortunately, you know, because things are changing so rapidly, it's been very um, challenging for us to stay ahead um, and to help prioritize and get resources stacked against those priority projects. Um, but yeah, we've, we've created that black market and uh, we'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> yeah, no, perfect. And you know, that is so important to be able to work on things and, and have the people work on things that are generating revenue um, in this uncertain time. So our last topic today, we just kind of wanted to talk about the future. Sophie? Sure. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's interesting that you know we're seeing such adapt adapting to this crisis um, across many different organisations, and that just refocusing of the efforts to ones that really pull in you know the the best revenue opportunities. Even though that you know over ninety sorry over eighty percent of leaders reported that their company's content strategy had shifted to really reflect the current environment, we're also seeing that almost a third of leaders say that SEO will probably gain or steeply gain more importance in their company as they move forward in their moving forward strategy. So, you know, when we think about that and we're thinking that working remotely is being proven to be possible um, with at least 80% of teams doing kind of real solid work and making arrangements um, to return to work and, but we're still seeing this productivity and quality performance with off-site roles. We're just really wondering, like, what is that going to look like for the future? Um, is it possible that we would now be more open to hiring geographically remote roles to really widen the recruitment pool uh, and get that talent from wherever they are to help in, in our organizations? Um, are we starting to see then in that case, it may even open up um, compensation values that would be related to the location of the worker. Um, organizations are definitely going to look at hiring differently, I think, moving forward. Um, how do you feel that's going to really impact where your office sits or your company sits with, with the future of the possibility of remote? Yeah, so kind of in, in wrapping that up, uh, kind of quickly as we go through Kevin, Kika, and Charlie, where where do you see things going? Like Sophie said, what's work life going to be like post-COVID uh, in, in your final thoughts here? Kevin? 
Yeah, I mean, there, there's no going back. I mean, this is the new norm. You know, I think the world's been talking about digital transformation and the importance of it for quite some time and, and remote work. And I think before COVID-19, you know, my team and my department, we were deep into discussions on shifting to a new org design model, uh, really powered by like a supercharged uh, project management function that practiced new ways of working and leveraging a lot of the tools that enable capabilities that we talked about earlier, things like capacity planning, demand management, collaboration, prioritization, for example. You know, my hope is that, you know, these are all lessons learned with COVID-19, and this will just help accelerate, accelerate some of these initiatives and discussions that have been happening. Thank you. Kika? You know, um, as, I, as I spoke at the beginning, we've already had a, a mindset of decentralization, so really leaning into what Sophie mentioned in regards to um, uh, resourcing outside of San Francisco, um, which is already a very difficult um, hiring market. Um, and so really finding um, uh, valuable um, uh, recruiting opportunities outside of very hot markets like here in Houston, um, in, in Portland, in Seattle. Um, this will allow us to um, kind of take the wheels off of what our previous thinking was in regards to needing the person on site, in house, working with the teams. Um, but what really comes down to um, being able to be successful at that, and someone did an, uh, ask this question in the Q&A section, but documentation, onboarding, um, making people feel like they're a part of the culture, um, those are things that we all have to consider moving forward. Um, having the right tools, having the right documentation, and having the right um, team uh, with the right type of culture um, to allow for remote workers to be successful. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Charlie? You know, I think one of the things that I've really seen is that, you know, getting the creative folks typically to use a project management system is oftentimes like having them go to the dentist. Um, you know, but I think what they've seen now is the value of how that can help them do their job better and with a lot less pain. So what we've seen is, is, is a much more um, them being open-minded and, and adapting their day and understanding that this is just like a, a pencil that can help them do their job better. Um, you know, and I think that's the one thing that my team in the operations have gotten numerous accolades from the creative folks, which I was very pleased and, and proud of. So I think these tools are going to be looked at a very, at a very different way. Um, we're also going to start to see how we can, now that we've been working remotely, how can we give people that opportunity more? You know, we have no idea when we're going to go, but, you know, the New York area, New Jersey, that, that's been hit really bad. People, we don't know how are people going to, you know, who have kids, how are they, we may have, they may be out for a while. Um, so what we've seen is is we're going to need to adapt to that. And, um, and lastly, as far as hiring with people remotely, um, that is, we do do that now. We do a little bit of uh, remote work as far as external people doing some freelance work. But I think there is something to be said about having the creative process where people can get together and kind of um, feed off each other. And sometimes that's a little difficult to do on a small little screen on your computer. So I think there is gonna be some adapt, ad, ad, adaptation to that, but um, I, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and, and I agree completely with, with all of you. The, the opportunity in front of us is gonna be amazing. Um, I think that we're certainly going through some uncertain times, but especially in, in the creative process, uh, we have some amazing things to look forward to with um, how we can take new products to market, um, how we ensure that everybody is able to work effectively from wherever they're at, even as Sophie said, from a bathtub or a bathroom. Um, but we certainly wanna thank our panelists for joining us today. Uh, Sophie, any last words before I give a call to action? No, I I am um, I love the comments that everybody's made and just really appreciate the opportunity to share this information from our report in addition to the experiences 
our panelists are seeing. And uh, thank you for this opportunity, Richard. Yeah, fantastic. So uh, on the screen, you see where you can get that seller report. Um, you can also find out about more with Workfront. You'll get these slides, so you don't have to uh, quickly jot that down. Uh, again, thank you very, very much to Sophie and the Sella team, as well as our panelists. We hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll talk to you all soon.